Howdy. I live in Texas now, so I got to say that. So I'm here to talk to you about four lessons I've learned about product development and how they can impact you, especially in the digital and IoT age. So who am I? I like to express my path in logos. So I started here at Clarkson, um, got a couple degrees from Clarkson, stayed to teach chemistry and work in the technology, as a technology director in the Shipley Center. Um, nights and weekends got a little more exciting than during the day, so I took that work and went full time with it. Uh, RTVL, it's a little more catchy than RT Vision Lab, so we kind of shortened it. Um, my partner and I work to develop proof of concept pro prototypes and minimum viable products with established companies to help them test quickly and efficiently whether or not they should enter a new market or develop a new product. And that's going to be a key thing here. Um, one of those clients uh, I ended up you know, acquiring, and uh, I started to work for them, um, building out that MVP and bringing it to market. We had a lot of great luck with that. It's really exciting. Uh, a couple things I want to uh, hit on here are the drastic difference between successful and unsuccessful uh, products. So I'm, we, you know, with, throughout those different roles, we um, focusing specifically on hardware here. We've brought three successful products, market ready, being sold. Um, you can actually buy them today. But 11 unsuccessful products that I'm much more proud of. Because what that meant was we built something. Someone had an idea. We tested that idea. We spoke to the customer. We said, would someone buy this? And that person said, no, which is great. Because that means we could stop that day and say, all right, on to the next one. Let's build something new. Um, and since we're focusing on IoT, nine of those were IoT products. Um, you can't give a good talk without uh, quoting Clayton Christensen, so here it is. Um, he uh, is a Harvard business professor and says that 30,000 new products are developed every year, and 95% of those are going to fail. Good. That means that 1,500 of them are still going to succeed, especially in IoT. This area is exploding. IoT is accelerating as, at an exponential rate, um, and there's a lot of great opportunities here. We should really design a president's challenge around that, I think, and really dive deeper into that. So let's start with lesson one. Who should be developing new products? You. All of you. We live in an age of aggregation. Five companies really own the technology market, and it's going to stifle innovation. The only way that we can really expand beyond where we are right now is by testing in our backyards, in our garages, and trying new things, and then going out further from there, really inspiring that competition. Lesson number two. It's easier than you think. I can't build the next iPhone. I can't invent a new product. Yes, you can. As long as you do what I started with, listen to the customer. All right? So start with the proof of concept. Right? You have an idea. You have an excellent idea. I know this is going to be great. The first Palm Pilot, which might be a dated reference for some of you, it's like an iPhone but with a stylus, Samsung Note, um, without the phone. The first Palm Pilot was made of wood. Right? The initial inventor had. Uh, carved out a piece of wood and literally a chopstick. That's, that's not a dowel, that's a chopstick out of his drawer. And spent a day practicing, pretending. Would I actually do this? Before I spend any time developing the hardware, before I did, have to worry about software, would I be willing to take notes on a piece of uh, metal in my hand, a piece of wood? Conveys the idea, right? Test your idea quickly. Put it in someone else's hands. Hey, would you do this? F and fail quick. No, I would never do that. We'll try. Well, yeah, I guess I would do this. No, I wouldn't do that. If you can get past the proof of concept stage, this is where the fun starts. Now you get to prototype. Prototypes are ugly. By definition, prototypes are ugly. But they are the most fun. This is where you say, OK, this might be a good idea, but let's build it. Don't worry about making it pretty. Don't worry about making it super functional. It doesn't have to be a market-ready product. But it's now something that instead of saying, imagine you can do this, it's something where someone can actually use it, and they can try it out. Hopefully, you avoid a little bit of electrocution in the process, but you get to actually give that a try. And lastly is the minimum viable product, right? the MVP. This is where you now have something that it's not super pretty, right? It doesn't have the spark, uh, sprinkles on it, but it works. It does the job. You can actually sell it. At this stage, you're making money, right? or you've given up. Because now you have something that you should be willing to hand to someone and say, Money, please. And if they say no, maybe it wasn't worth making. But you learned well before 
you, uh, well faster than you could have. Well faster? Much faster than you could have. It's the fastest and simplest version of your product that you can bring to market. All right, so now you know how to do it, right? We're all good with that. So lesson number three. There are way more resources available for this than you think, especially in IoT. It has never been easier to develop a new product, to test this and bring it to market. Great thing to say at a university, but uh, information has been fully democratized. I like to think that we learn how to learn here, and that allows us to go into the, into the world and acquire new information from all the resources available to us. Between Stack Overflow, YouTube, SparkFun, and Code Academy, those are just some, I'm not endorsing these, um, you can teach yourself electrical engineering. I would also recommend talking to an electrical engineer and make sure you did it right. Um, but you can at least get through that uh, initial test phase, right? Spend those nights and weekends learning something new. It's easier to get stuff to do. Parts have never been easier to get. Radio Shack, which is a, it's kind of like Amazon, but it, it was a st store in your backyard uh, where you could get circuits. Um, sorry, I'll avoid looking down. Um, <laughs> Radio Shack is literally in your, in your pocket. You can go to Mauser and DigiKey and get production-ready products. But before you go to that point, hey, I think I want to use this one accelerometer for this thing. Well, you can buy a breakout board that allows you to test that, find if it's the right one, and then dig deeper into the actual parts. And it's cheap. That's a touch sensor, right? That is something that is literally a capacitor button that you can try out for six bucks. And if you go to the sites that we listed before, you can learn how to use it. PCB, uh, design and, and fab. This one's pretty specific to IoT, um, but it, you can make a circuit board in your dorm room. It, actually safe, right? Because you make it on the computer, you design it, you check things online, you talk to some community members, have them check your board for you, you run some design rule checks, you use some pretty easy off-the-shelf so software. For those students here, Eagle has an uh, educational license. You can use industry-level software you can try it out for free because you're learning. Then you can upload that to sites like OSH Park or Seed, and all the hard and expensive uh, stuff is done for you, and it's shipped back to you, and now you have a circuit. Also, I'm pretty sure there's some great resources around here you might want to check out as well. Um, once you've got that circuit, um, you can actually uh, test it. This is one of my favorite uh, circuits. This was my first circuit that I ever made, and it uh, did not work. <laughs> It cost me $20 and two weeks to test that, um, and there was beautiful smoke that came out of it. And then I learned, iterated, tried again. The next one we actually put in front of a customer because that one wasn't smoking. Once you've validated that concept, you've developed these, these, uh, these services, you can use, um, there's really been a lot of growth in the pick and place area where when you're actually making more than one, making one thing is pretty easy. Making a lot of one thing that is the same as that one thing, that's a bit harder. But this has gotten easier because uh, sources like PCBNG and Macrofab have made it easier to, uh, to scale contract manufacturing. What they've done is they've offloaded a lot of the work to you. You know, typical contract manufacturer, here's the design files, they go, they do their thing. These guys say, yeah, okay, where, did they, where do they go? Which one goes where? How does this and they've, they've, uh, by doing that, they've made it a lot easier and cost effective for them to produce these boards for you. IoT as a service. It has never been easier to build an IoT device. You don't even have to talk to the carriers, right? You can go to a service like Particle and Hologram, get their uh, preformed pre um, microcontrollers with modems built in, learn a little C++, and now you've got an IoT device. You can actually buy kits with these. I highly recommend, if you have any interest in IoT, get a kit like these um, and just play with it. You can push a button on your phone and the light on your desk turns on in a weekend. And there's no better feeling than doing something like that. So lesson four, everyone here can be creative. Uh, you, if you're a student here at Clarkson, you've chosen for some reason to spend the winters in Potsdam. I, I did it for nine years. I can, I can attest that it, it, is, it is something. But you're a special kind of person. And take advantage of that, right? One of the worst lies I've ever heard is that there are creative people. There's no creative people. We are all creative. There's only people who create. So be one. And let me know if I can help. <laughs>